be power to record, just let me know. Be happy to get to you. We're going to start here in a minute. I'm on one of the I'm one of the family members that was referenced working with uh, the police chief and city management to revamp some of the ordinances and policies. Um, so I just want to stress how important it is to keep our voices centered around this as this role evolves, as that team evolves, um, because nobody can tell you guys better than us how exactly everything is functioning and the lack of communication that's given to the families after a critical incident. Um, so obviously, you know, we've brought by a lot of the room for improvement, a lot of the holes that exist in the current procedures on how families are handled after a critical incident. Um, so I just really wanted to speak and stress how important it is. Okay, everybody, we're going to get started. Um, like mine again, rules of the game. The forefront, uh, Dr. LeBron will open with some uh, comments. You can leave yourself on mute so for the duration of that. We appreciate it. And we open the floor to questions days. for um, anyone. Uh, again, please let us know who you are with before you. or as you introduce Thank you, yourself. Hernandez, I appreciate that. Some of you know, now, some of you we don't. With, so that would be helpful. Um, we were last with you two weeks ago. Helping us to improve and make a chance for Dr. Liberta to give you an update on what he's seeing in the data the for you to ask questions. For our future um, we do numbers. sort of steer clear of ASU-specific uh, issues. We can handle that, that uh, item um, through the other sources. But with, with that in mind, um, let me turn it over to Dr. Joshua Liber, the executive director of Arizona State University's um, Biodesign um, Institute. This, Dr. Uh, Liber? Are we moving Hi, on well, good to see everybody public. after a couple of weeks here. Uh, you know, a lot we, going on right now really still in the world of COVID-19, so I thought I'd so kind of give you an update on what we're seeing from this perspective. Agenda items. As usual, I'm going to start just by showing you a little bit of the data that we track on a daily basis um, from our um, website here. Just also I'm going to just things. share I'm not um, for, my screen for here for a second. Efforts, um, uh, this is the graph that I look at, new cases, total cases, and what this gives us a sense of is the level of acceptance acceleration of this thing. Uh, whenever the Hopefully graph is moving up and to the right, that's a sign that it's accelerating. And as you can see, starting that, at sort of mid-June um, and for the last and, and uh, time since then, um, we've been in a sort of accelerated growth phase, which is day, you know, day over day, week over week. And, and we've been having this rates conversation about the You can see that right now, and, and there's a little bit of a stall here um, in terms of new cases. So the number of new cases per day doesn't seem to be rising as fast. So if this graph goes sort of flat over the top, that means that it's Kind of an a car going at a constant speed, uh, in this case, pretty fast, several thousand new cases we're a day. Going on and so on. Uh, I'm so a little basically hesitant to overinterpret the rate of the case numbers at this point, and that's because, kind of as many of you know, there are now that. many available home tests for COVID-19. Well, so people can go to any pharmacy and buy one of these home tests, and they can test themselves at home. Anybody and when they do so, those numbers are typically not reported to the state. And so those numbers are not accessible okay. to us. We can't look at how fast the number of cases is growing else, or Mr. not Barton, growing for the when people are testing order. at home and not Madam connected Chair, to the system. So that that's something that we scheduled. don't know as much about. What we can look at and Excellent. what's hard to, to fudge Thank you. Are, are people in the hospitals. And we can look at that. I'm going to just show you the numbers from our website here. Um, look at kind of the last 90 days. And as you can see, um, the number of beds in the hospital due to COVID-19 has been rising. That number seems to have stabilized a little bit over the last um, number of days in, summer, in terms okay. of in, in, uh, uh, how many new cases are showing up in the hospital. Um, air but around a quarter uh, of the beds or a little bit more than that in the hospital are now due to COVID-19. A little bit more worried about uh, ICU beds, which which um, still seem to be rising cooling uh, in, this in the hospital. So let me just show you what that number looks like. It's a little more generous because those systems don't work as well. As you can see, that number seems to be going up. Uh, in uh, the number of uh, beds occupied in the ICU with COVID-19, that's over 30% of them right now. If you talk to most hospitals, they'll tell you they're pretty full of COVID-19 patients. And of course, the death numbers are also rising. Death For generations, a our ancestors have so told that the Choctaw people began some concerns here when you about, rose up you know, where, out of the where earth. things are going in the state. With every obstacle, uh, every setback, three major contributing factors, every hardship, I think, that play a role we rise. here. Uh, uh, the first of Rising up is in our blood. There is it is how we grew into the tribe we are around. today. And that remains fuel for when the we stand together the through sickness and carry our weakest to higher ground. We rise. 
are unvaccinated. We need new challenges. I think another driver here is the Delta dignity. variant that is occupying the vast majority of cases in our state. Nearly in the 1830s, we rose the Delta virus. when we established the first schools for our children. Achieves very high copy in 1960s, we rose again we somebody and when we prevented our tribe from complete dissolution. And then possibly another contributing factor and in 2020, may be um, waning we rose immunity that, when the Choctaw you know, Nation were and the entire world back was in afflicted January, by a global or, pandemic. In late December or maybe even February. Um, it's the Choctaws are no strangers to perseverance. We are a people of resilience, a so people of endurance, that kind of brings us a people to of honor that people and strength raised a lot lately, who rise up this question of to meet challenges. Um, we're seeing breakthrough cases both in people who've been vaccinated and, and in tomorrow, people who are formally infected by the virus. We will uh, continue Both types of individuals can get the infection again. Or, or in the case of vaccinated people, they can get the infection after the vaccine. Last year, so, I remind um, you all that uh, we are a people of miracles. The literature suggests right now, and we have continued to prove it by taking care of each other yet, through some of the toughest like obstacles in the past, we've faced in a century. Variants of the virus, Choctaw people uh, make a positive impact on their communities every day through their hard work to and determination. So about less we still have challenges to face, but because of our Choctaw like spirit, Delta variant, our community remains strong and continue to grow through different so your people one of the ways our people make a difference is through education infected. and the Choctaw people that have most always all valued people education know someone personally in fact who was vaccinated Choctaw and built still got first schools in or, um, Indian territory. or know someone in your circle for whom that that's the case today and you may probably our higher education and career development infected. programs support uh, tribal uh, members another infection learn so new skills um, the breakthrough cases are definitely happening in a happening. dynamic job market it is still much less likely that if this year vaccinated we increased the amount of funding hospital, for higher ed But programs. nonetheless, getting the infection We've also the changed fund. some of the eligibility this, requirements course, to, to make it even easier for shots, tribal members which is, to get help um, through scholarships, in the offing, technology, and clothing scheduled to be a, a meeting uh, from the CDC. We know people on the are happier, of the data healthier, around that and more successful September. when their most basic uh, needs so are met. Less than two weeks from now. That's why the Choctaw Nation works you know, so they're hard still evaluating to lift those our numbers. tribal members uh, out of unsafe, their data collected now substandard both from Moderna houses. and from Pfizer. Looking at people over this past are, year, we performed think, over a thousand of our trailers five and installed months out, hundreds of uh, storm shelters. cut off and looked at people before We've also built new housing units. So we'll have to see where that where that all ends up. I will affordable I'm, rentals. I will and share my opinion with you. Housing. Please be aware that this is just my opinion, uh, uh, and and I don't have all the data yet. Uh, my opinion is that I think boosters are likely to be helpful. I think that um, uh, particularly with this Delta variant, which this is body our independent elder so many housing, virus, kind of in between Clara and Duran. Cells. Independent um, elder living as much is antibody around just that. As possible our elders get to stay independent. And the data they suggests, can at least the data live that their I lives. They can come and go get as they that, please. You know, a it's third just shot, a small six community after where they can feel series, safe and it secure. Brings the I think much you're higher, 14 and years. And I think that that will probably protect against getting infected now. Most of you know, our primary residents goal of all here to prevent people only from have social hospital, security. Uh, and, and here, them from ending up their in the rent is based dying. off and of their income. There's a lot of reasons so they're only paying a small the portion of what they would be paying in a, a fantastic market. job at preventing that. Um, but I think none of us wants to get infected, particularly because we don't yet know what all the long term sequelae are from getting infected. And so, I, I, I'm, again, my personal opinion is the boosters are likely to be beneficial, but we'll have to wait until. The formal studies are done. Last thing I'm going to mention is there's been a lot of talk about variants. Uh, as most of you know, for a long time now, or for weeks now anyway, the, the viral scene in Arizona has been dominated very heavily by the Delta variant. And that still is the case. However, we have seen now, uh, Ephraim Lim, one of our professors who does routine sequencing, has identified two cases of the mu strain. This is a strain. Um, uh, that has, it's currently a variant of interest. It's not yet a variant of concern. It may never be a variant of concern, but it has a number of mutations that at least theoretically suggest that it could evade the immune system and be good at transmission. And so that has people a little worried based on just the theoretical risk of it. Um, literally only two cases so far, the overwhelming majority of cases that we see are still Delta and and 
uh, no, the, the mu strain has not become dominant anywhere that I'm aware of on the, on the planet yet. I think this does bring us to the kind of bigger picture thought, maybe what I'll end with this here, which is just that I think we all have to be aware that as long as the number of viruses on planet Earth are high, as long as lots of people are still getting infected and producing lots of virus, it is mathematically inevitable that another variant will, will surface somewhere that just by random chance is very good at transmission and may evade the immune system. Uh, and so we have to prepare ourselves for that. Um, best way to prevent it, of course, is to get the numbers of viruses low. The, as long as the virus is not replicating uh, very much, then the, the mathematical chance that it will land on a mutation that gives it the capabilities of evading the immune system and being transmissible get much lower. And so hopefully we can get all of this under control and get that level of transmission reduced. Um, but we do need to sort of think about that. And of course, there are vaccine strategies for these, these uh, escape mutants, if you will, and, and uh, uh, the mRNA vaccines in particular, but even the other vaccines have ways of managing it. So we'll have to see where that all goes. So I'm going to stop there and open this up to questions and see where, where that leads. Hi, Thank Dr. Lavaer. This is Dan Daniela with Univision. Sorry, Jay. I think I, no, no. Went, ahead, I went ahead of you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, Dr. Laver, you know, Delta is 99 predominant in the United States, and we are, have seen the what is causing to, to in this pandemic. And um, going back to the Mu variant, and again, it's ahead of time, but, you know, people, uh, right now, I think we need to think ahead of time after, you know, what happened. Yeah. We know that, for example, in Colombia and Ecuador, yep. this, this variant is predominant. And, um, you know, it's kind of confusing. I don't know if you can clarify. So what I have read on one side is in the labs in vitro, it shows that these mutations can ev uh, evadir, can, can skip the effectiveness of the vaccine or even the plasma treatment. Um, do we have uh, any information of how these variants are already, that this variant that is already uh, predominant in those countries. What is it doing there? Is, it, is it, there is enough data that could tell us, you know, right. what we, we're seeing in in vitro here, how can that translate in the population? And um, yeah. Right. I don't think we have those data yet. I think that's one of the issues. It's worth mentioning that the mutations that we observe in mu um, look like the same mutations we saw in the beta variant, if you remember that what used to be called the South Africa variant. It's the same kind of mutations. And, and those, those data suggested that in vitro, in the lab, in cells in the lab, the, um, the, that variant was better at escaping the immune system. Um, it is also worth mentioning that when vaccines were used in countries that predominated with beta, the vaccines worked very well. So at least in, on, you know, in action, in people, the vaccine still worked against the beta variant, and I suspect that that is encouraging, at least, that it will probably they will probably work against mu. Um, we don't know that yet. We haven't seen the data yet. Um, uh, what what's more worrisome about mu is just that not only does it have that escape uh, mutation, but it also seems to have some of the mutations that make delta such a powerhouse in terms of copy number. So we'll have to see how that all plays. But we don't have the data yet. Uh, it's all theoretical at the moment, um, but it, it, it's there is some reason to believe that the vaccines will still work there. But as I said, it's only a matter of time before um, a variant appears that where the vaccines don't work as well, and we're going to have to adapt to that. Uh, Dr. Alba, I have a follow-up question in terms that I was reading, and just to try to put into context to people, you know, the different classification of the uh, of the variants, if you can differentiate what is an interest versus or concern or um, I think there is one that is a grand impact or grand consequence, sorry. If yeah. you could explain briefly on that. And the second question that is kind of like related to um, the holiday weekend, every holiday that we have seen since we have met last year, two weeks after there is a cases up. Right. Do you right. expect that with Delta, the cases will go up in two weeks or do you expect that it will be less than two weeks because the... Uh, the symptoms show up quickly. So if you can- Oh, interesting question. question. Yeah, so, so yeah, so there are a couple of categorizations. I'm not an expert at this, but um, uh, 
so far, at least with COVID-19, there has not been a variant of great consequence where we've had to uh, enact immediate action. There have been several variants of concern. Um, mu is not one of them. It remains a variant of interest, um, I think in part because it hasn't sort of swept through and created huge waves the way um, Delta has, for example, or some of the other variants have. We'll have to watch it. I suspect that they may change that if, if they see evidence that it's really taking over, um, but we just haven't seen that yet. Um, your comment about the holiday weekend is absolutely apropos. Um, I, I, I would have said two weeks is probably what we might expect to see in terms of you know, um, a surge coming after that. I think if you look at the UK, for example, um, the UK kind of peaked a, a little bit early on in this last wave, and then it was the numbers were getting better in the UK. And then they had their Independence Day celebration of independence from COVID, and then their numbers went up again. And so now what looked like it might have been a limited wave in the UK looks like it may be prolonged there. Uh, and so one can only imagine that after the Labor Day weekend, if people were out partying and gathering in crowds, there's a risk here that that we may see that. Um, and you're right, with Delta, the incubation time with Delta is maybe one to two days shorter than with the earlier variants. So it's possible that instead of 14 days, it'll be more like 10 to 12 days after uh, Labor Day. So we'll have to see, uh, but we could well see that, um, particularly if people were gathering in crowds. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, Daniela. Angela Gonzalez. Hi, Angela Gonzalez with the Phoenix Business Journal. Thanks for taking my call. I have a quick question about monoclonal antibodies. Dr. LeBear, do you think those almost serve as a booster shot to fight future infections for those who have had COVID and they get that antibody infusion? Does it give them extra fighting power against a future infection? Probably not. So, so monoclonal antibodies are used kind of as a replacement for your own antibodies. They do the same thing that your antibodies do, which is they bind to the virus and prevent it from getting in cells, which is why monoclonal antibodies are especially useful very early in the infection, not so useful once the, uh, the infection is established. Once the infection is established, a lot of the symptoms are not the virus itself, it's the body's response to the virus that, that causes that. So the monoclonal antibodies don't teach the body how to make its own response. They just, they just kind of step in and do it. Um, what the vaccine does is it sort of alerts the body to what the virus looks like, kind of like providing um, a rap sheet to the local police forces and saying, be on the lookout for this bad guy. Uh, he's in town and, or he's coming to town and you want to be prepared for him. And, and so that's what the vaccine does. And, and um, the monocles don't really do that. Other questions? Um, I have a question. Um, I'm Julia Sandor from Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. Um, I just want to see if you could touch on um, kind of uh, children cases. I know it's been going up since everybody's been um, back. Right. So yeah. if you can just touch on I that. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. I meant to say that. Um, yeah, so the numbers right now in Maricopa County are that um, one in four new cases of COVID is in a child. So um, the numbers are rising. It's the fastest growing demographic for infection in the state. Um, you know, one can imagine numbers of reasons for that, um, not the least of which, of course, is that, that there is no vaccine available for children right now. So um, they are entirely susceptible. And if one child gets it, and it's surrounded by kids who are not vaccinated, of course, um, they all may get it. Um, uh, right now, the, the, the one thing that can prevent spread, of course, in children is that they can be secondary things like wearing masks can prevent spread. And of course, if family members all get vaccinated, people who can get vaccinated around them get vaccinated, they, they can provide a barrier, uh, you know, protecting the kids a little bit. But um, certainly, you know, kids are, are back in school and um, the spread is pretty high right now among, among young kids. I, I will also mention, you know, obviously the risk of, of hospitalization is much lower in children than it is in older adults, but it is not zero. And there are um, a number of kids now in the hospitals, some of them with severe COVID infection. So it is not unheard of for kids to get severe disease. It's just not as common. 
Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Other questions? This is Allison Steinbuck with The Republic. Thanks so much for doing this again. Um, so you mentioned breakthrough cases and you were talking about um, the difference with Delta and the state is saying the breakthrough case percentage of kind of all cases in August is between like 13 and 15% of cases are people who were fully vaccinated. Is that worrisome or is the main point that most of those people are not getting hospitalized or dying still? Well, I mean, certainly um, it, the fact that they're not mostly hospitalized is very reassuring. I mean, that is the real goal of the vaccines. That was the end point that all the manufacturers went after um, in, intentionally was that. That said, you know, um, it, I think the fact that this Delta variant is just so transmissible, um, that the copy numbers are so high, and the fact that many of the people who um, may have gotten breakthrough cases in August you know, might have gotten vaccinated in, you know, February or March. And so there may have been some diminishment in their antibody levels. And so it's kind of a perfect storm, if you will. You've got this variant that overwhelms the body with, with high numbers of viruses and the fact that the antibody levels are maybe a little bit lower because it's been months since the initial, since the vaccination, that combination may be leading to some of the breakthrough cases. Um, I mean, I think no, nobody... Well, at least I speak for myself. I wouldn't prefer not to get the virus at all, uh, and so I think that's where um, you know boosting the antibody levels may be helpful. We'll, we'll have to see what those data show. Thanks so much. Yep. Hi, Dr. Navarre. Me again. If there are no more questions from other people, but. You know, this is the, um, another topic, you know, I'm talking to the breakthrough, you know, we have seen it more common um, uh, to hear like somebody that you know, and um, you know, you see it when you go out, you know, even outdoors, you see people like with no mask, but you go indoors and people have no mask. Is there truly right now with the Delta, if you go outdoors with another person uh, vaccinated or unvaccinated, that has the infection, can you get it? Should you recommend that in certain circumstances, maybe you wear the mask, even if you are outdoors being vaccinated, considering that right. immunity might be going down now? Right, well, you know, um, it's all about uh, viruses reaching from, you know, the, ex the exhaled air from one person or the, the spoken air from one person being breathed by the other person. So when you're outdoors and you're, separated by a decent distance, the chance, um, you know, if you could imagine whether you could smell their breath, for example, is relatively low. And so your chance of getting infected is certainly lower outdoors. Um, that said, if you're outdoors and you're in a crowd, if you're, if you're packed close together in a stadium, if you're packed close together in some concert, outdoor concert, or you're outside and you're crowded, you probably could breathe their air and I probably would be wearing a mask under those circumstances. In fact, I know I would. Um, indoors, of course, the risk is much higher. Um, indoors, we're sharing air constantly. The air doesn't get recirculated that fast. And, and I mean, if you can imagine if there was somebody smoking nearby and you're indoors, you'd smell it, even if they're five or six feet away. That means you're breathing their air, right? You can, you can detect that. Um, and you could use similar kind of judgment outdoors as well. If, if you are likely to be able to, you know, smell their breath, chances are you're going to get their viruses as well. Uh, Dr. Laver, do, does a team from the Biodesign Institute, I'm sorry if you have shared it and I, I, I haven't seen it, does, do, do you remember that earlier in the pandemic and, and even earlier this year, you kind of show a trend and they didn't show a peak until I think it was August. Of course, they didn't consider the Delta variant at that time. Do right now with the Delta variant, have you guys make projection of how it looks into November? And oh, yeah, yeah. We So our modeling team, um, uh, you know, we're doing a number of fantastic models. They're really an outstanding group. Um, they It's very hard to do models right now uh, because there are so many different variables, not the least of which is this the, the you know the possibility of breakthrough cases. So classic models assume that once you've been infected, you don't get infected again. Um, and that doesn't really hold anymore because even if you've been infected, we see lots of people 
getting reinfected now. Um, and, and so, uh, and also just getting the numbers that they need to do their modeling is much harder. A lot of people who are getting tested for COVID-19 are doing it at home and, and those numbers are not reported to the state anymore. So, um, so they haven't done a model anymore, uh, like we did in the past. Um, it's, it's a little bit harder to predict where this will go. Other questions from the group? Okay, hearing uh, none, we appreciate you attending and we will reach out to you when uh, we are ready to do this again. If you would like a copy uh, of a recording of this, please reach out to myself or to Sandy Leander, we'd be happy to get it to you. Otherwise, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Take care, everybody.